Good morning, Valerie. I hope that you are really ready for a journey that we have in front of us. Every about three Wednesdays from this point on, we will talk about the reason for a season. Yes, we will talk about Jesus. And this is the season of that. We call it Christmas. Um, some can argue if it's really this is a day when he was born or not, or not but guess what? This is the season where the whole community, a culture, recognize Christmas as something very much important. And um, rather than talk about Santa Claus, we will talk about really reason for a season. But before getting into it, let us see a couple of songs from the young people who dedicate their time and to share with us their talents. Take a look.
I hope that you enjoyed those songs. Well, uh, this morning, as I was telling you, we will talk about reason for a season, and that's a Jesus Christ. But actually, for the for the Christians, that's a miracle in itself. And uh, before we go into Jesus Christ, I would like to bring you some very interesting point or something that happened in our nature that even scientists today take it um, very, uh, what the word I can use, very seriously in context of they still don't know processes. Why is that happening and how actually that is developed? But let me, let me start with this. If you expose a human or other mammals to the freezing temperature, result will be in what? It's a frostbite, and if the temperature really continued there and we expose ourselves to that, guess what will happen? A death. But God is giving certain species of the animals, snake and frogs, ability to survive a cold temperature, even being frozen. That is the miracle. This capacity is not fully understood by the science, but it is achieved by the two mechanisms. One is called freezing tolerance, where the, it's a rare ability in which the body is able to survive freezing and uh, destructive ice formation in the tissue. And when the thaw is happening, they just springs to life. That is amazing. The other mechanism that is known in nature <coughs> is called freezing avoidance or, or supercooling. What does that mean? In this process, the body contains substance uh, like uh, glucose that acts like a natural antifreeze and prevent ice formation in a tissue cell. For instance, below frozen lakes and ponds, the frogs known as a painted turtles, sorry, painted turtles, can stay submerged and motionless for as long as the three months, three months, but they never actually freeze. It is the mystery how they can survive in this state of uh, submission of submerged animation or subjugation of the animation for as long as three months with the zero blood oxygen. For humans, if you do that to them, there is no way that we can survive because if we don't have oxygen in our brain for four minutes, we will be pronounced brain dead. It's amazing. Of course, for most cold-blooded animals, freezing temperature means death. But there are some amphibians that hibernate at or near the soil surface where temperatures can drop significantly uh, below the freezing point of their body fluids. These creatures have amazing ability to endure the freezing of water in extra cellular body compartments. In fact, among some frogs, as much as 65% of their body water can be frozen and they can still survive. And this is the miracle that science observe, we can observe, and it's still we are 
taken by surprise. How on earth this is happening? It's a very interesting process uh, that, that astonish our mind. And uh, I'm just wondering about these things that we have in nature. But did you know that God puts a mechanism for us to secure our salvation? And that is mystery that was revealed to you and I. But before we go there, let us listen another song. I hope that you enjoy this song. Let me just remind you that we just talk about uh, some processes in the nature where the certain species of frogs, uh, snakes, amphibians, they can survive freezing temperature and they just can spring into life after that. Uh, there are some mechanisms that I believe God, God put there in order to, to secure their survival. I believe that God put the same mechanism for you and I in a Bible. He put certain mechanisms for us to have security that God will act on mind in your salvation, that we are not orphans, that we are not alone, that, that God act on mind in your behalf. In about three Wednesdays, we will talk about this. I want you to have this image about perfection that God put in the Bible for us to have security in mechanism he put in a plan of salvation for you and I to have security. When we look at the future, when we look at the present, and when we look at the past, we can see that God was never far away from us. But let me bring this to the, to the center right now. One of the first things that God put in the Bible, where he announced that he will act on mine and your behalf, even though we said, God, we do not want you as authority. We, we um, disobey what God was asking of us. But in spite of what Adam and Eve did, God find a way to bridge that gap 
and he give us little hints like a breadcrumbs that we can follow in the Bible to have this security. Here it goes. In um, uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, he is actually meeting Adam and Eve and the snake who was a medium that Lucifer was using to, to entice, to trick Adam and Eve. He's meeting them after sin they did and he's approaching to them and he's delivering his uh, word of prophecy to each one of them. He's establishing relation between Adam and Eve and how they will relate to one another. But also in one verse he's making significant uh, uh, prophecy or you can say the relationship, how it will be between the woman, between the, uh, the Eve in this context, and the snake. Remember now, this is Adam, the, the uh, Eve and the snake become symbols of the, of the things that will come later on. Eve, as a woman, represent a God's church. Israel in Old Testament, Christian church in the New Testament. And, and the snake was always symbolism of, of, of Satan. And look at this verse in 15, chapter 3, verse 15. I will put enmity. Enmity means actively opposed or being hostile towards one another. I will put enmity between women and the snake. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. And he's saying, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Now, suddenly, instead of using female pronoun, he's saying here, he will crush. He's now bringing some new element here. This verse is actually the foundation where God is starting revealing how he will act on mine and your behalf. He's saying that he, which is the descendant offspring of woman, he will crush the head of the snake, but snake will always bite his heel. And this is the foundation where we see the breadcrumb or the process mechanism that God put for you and I in the Bible to follow. Next verse, I would like you to be aware of this, is, is one of my favorite Bible characters. It's Abraham. It's the promise that God gave to him. But look at what God said to him in chapter 12, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. I will bless those who bless you. Whoever curses you, I will curse, and I, all people on earth will be blessed through you. In other verses from this beginning, God said that through your seeds, through your offspring, I will bless. See, here he's talking about something very interesting. He's talking about Abraham as the foundation of the blessing, not only to Jewish people. Abraham become a foundation where through which God will bless all. What's happening there? Because now Abraham become the symbol of how to be faithful to God. When we observe Abraham's life, you see that God changed his name because of his faithfulness. And he become good example how to follow God. And in that seed, in that faithfulness, God will bless the whole world. It's very important for us to, that means through that observation of God's presence in mine and your life, God will bless you and I, just like he blessed Abraham. We can see now this golden thread that comes from Genesis. We see how God is using Abraham and he's walking with people of, in Old Testament, showing his character, his presence in their life and building in their minds a picture of what God stands for. 
we see that he he promised that someone will come who will uh, stand for what God is standing for. He said through Abraham that Abraham will become the good example that God will bless all nations through him. Let's follow a little bit further and see um, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12 and 13. Here is what, what is said there. When your days are over, this is God talking through Samuel, prophet Samuel, talking to David. And he's prophesying, saying, when your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to, suc su to succeed you who will come from your own body and I will establish his kingdom. He will be the one who will build a house to my name. I believe there is fulfillment of this in his son Samuel. But also, there is the point that through his offspring, God will raise the people who will be faithful just like David was. And he will, that line of faithfulness, will build a God's temple, build a God's house. And that is very much important for us to recognize, to see that God gradually revealing how he will act on mine and your behalf. And last verse for this Wednesday is in uh, Numbers chapter 24, verse 17, states like this. I see him, prophet said, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. And you can continue reading these verses. But I would like you to just hold on to this thought. Prophet, actually Moses, in Numbers, stating that someone is coming after Moses. Also, there is a promise that God will raise the prophet like Moses, who will lead people. And God really uh, uh, work on his, on his word. Throughout history of Israel, he always work on the people who will lead Israel. And also, there is a point here that even uh, Moses, he sees even the Joseph, the one of his uh, followers after Moses, he was there, but Moses did not talk about him. He was talking about someone who was not there yet, who was not that, who is here but not yet. And that he said, the star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. See, I believe that God prepared you and I for something that is coming. God is preparing and give us certainty that all those prophecies about upcoming leader of Israel, Mashiach, is gradually revealed in the Bible. We know that he will be the one who will be uh, stepping up on, uh, on uh, Satan's kingdom. We know that he will... He will uh, um, uh, be the blessing through Abraham's seed that's coming in. We know that <coughs> he will establish uh, uh, God's home, a kingdom. And that's happened. We will talk about that even more. We will remember our uh, one more time this verse. But also in Numbers, he's saying the star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. God never leave us alone. He give us certainty about his plan of our salvation. We can see that. 
I want you to see and be and accepting this fact that God is working on mine and your behalf. From the eons of time, from the beginning of the life on earth until now, God is work on mine and your life. And we enjoy this God's masterpiece of love and grace. We know it as a Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ is the person who was, pro who was prophesied about. Do you believe that? This is, this is just beginning of the things that we will talk about. That's why, sit still. We are going forward with this. This is just first, first uh, uh, Wednesday, and we are going forward to work on this. Lord Almighty God, thank you for giving us purpose for today. Thank you, God, for giving us certainty that we are not alone. That you act on our behalf even before we even existed. Thank you for giving us your word that we can look at this marvel, marvel mechanism of plan of salvation that you put for us, God. Thank you. Rem thank you for reminding us that we are not alone, that uh, my and your salvation is secure. My dear friend, Jesus promised us that. Thank you, God, for everything. Give us peace in this time. Give us forgiveness of sins according to your word. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.